We were all there Saturday night in Times Square when three innocent people were shot senselessly. While there is no joy today, there is justice. Several hours ago in Florida, and Chief Essek will detail the details, the shooter in the incident was apprehended and will be eventually returned to face justice in New York City. Saturday evening, after leaving Times Square, I went to Bellevue Hospital, to the pediatric emergency room. And there I spoke to the young girl's father, as the father and mother were consoling the child, about to enter surgery. At the time, I had the opportunity to speak to the father, to tell, tell him that we were sorry, and we would do everything within our power to get justice for his little girl. Well, today we fulfilled that promise, and I knew we would fulfill that promise because of the work of the greatest detectives in the world. Chief Essek is now going to detail how the apprehension went about. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, with, can anybody hear me? Good. Uh, with me today is Chief Hank Sortner, the commanding officer of Manhattan South Detectives, and Mike Kletzel, the commanding officer of the Fugitive uh, Task Force. Uh, also with me is Lieutenant Mario Nicholas from the Midtown South Detective Squad who led the investigation. Earlier today, members of the United States Marshal's Office apprehended Farrakhan Muhammad in a McDonald's parking lot in Stark, Florida, just outside of Jacksonville. Mr. Muhammad was with a female who we believed to be his girlfriend, and he was taken into custody without incident. Before I get into more details, I'd like to thank our partners in law enforcement, particularly members of the U.S. Marshal's Office for their help. I also want to thank Hank Sortner's people, Manhattan South detective personnel, and homicide detectives for their work. Uh, if you can only imagine, it's a daytime shooting, Times Square, thousands of hours of video canvassing to be viewed, witnesses to be interviewed. The eyes of the world were on them. They were watching. And here we are, four days later, with an apprehension, an identification of the perpetrator made a few hours after this horrific incident. Truly a great job by the New York City police detectives. In particular, I want to point out two sharp-eyed sergeants, Sergeants Monaco and Essex, who had a later homicide investigation nearby that night, spotted the intended target based on clothing match and facial similarities, and, he was in, and, and that uh, intended target was able to be interviewed. Also, a P.O. Latimer, who was formally assigned to the Times Square detail, who viewed the picture of Mr. Muhammad and was instrumental in the idea of the suspect. Uh, I'd also like to thank Mike Kletzel and his people in Warrens, particularly Timmy Q, the lead investigator in Warrens, and the Fugitive Task Force, who never ceased to amaze me in apprehending some of the world's most violent perpetrators. Finally, I want to thank the public for all your help. We received numerous Crime Stoppers tips that are instrumental in the identification. Uh, and it shows how much Crime Stoppers is valuable and the need for the police department's help in your matters. So shortly after the shooting that took place on May 8th, detectives from Midtown South developed information and identification as to the shooter, a Mr. Farrakhan Muhammad, a male 31 years old. Through leads from the public via Crime Stoppers tips and other investigative measures, we were able to determine that Mr. Muhammad was traveling out of state and heading south. This was confirmed by video surveillance obtained in Fayville, North Carolina, with a positive sighting. Investigators also, also developed information of a few possible addresses in Florida. Working with our partners in the Fugitive Task Force, we located him at 802 South Walnut Street, a McDonald's parking lot. We believe a woman who was his girlfriend was driving the auto. Mr. Muhammad was taken into custody with, without incident. He is presently located in the custody of the Stark Police Department and the investigation is continuing. On another note, my detectives visited our four-year-old victim yesterday and she along with the two other unintended victims are expected to make a full recovery. 
Uh, with that, I'd like to take any questions. Linda Smith. Hi, thanks, Chief. Um, so sources have been telling us that you guys tracked him after, shortly after the shooting to a hotel in Times Square, and then he was seen on surveillance camera video leaving with the woman, and then they drove south. They were detected, he said, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and then ended up in Florida. Can you go into a little bit more detail about that, about that Thank hotel you. here in Times Square? And Thank you. The search the warrant, right? Video? The search warrant we did? Yeah. yeah, okay. I'll turn that over to the Hank Sortner, Chief Hank Sortner from Manhattan South. Yeah, so from the inception of the investigation, we did an exhaustive search, numerous, numerous sources of video, which we tracked from the incident location, ultimately to a location on West 42nd Street where we believe Mr. Muhammad to be residing with his girlfriend. Based on that video, we saw him exiting the location, uh, discarding some evidence, which was since recovered, and then making his way out of there, uh, heading into parts unknown. At that point, that's when the Regional Fugitive Task Force subsequently, later that evening, when we had positively identified Mr. Muhammad, they took over the uh, apprehension efforts and then tracked him heading down south. And the evidence that he got rid of, his clothing, change of clothing? Yes. yes. Christian, is his, uh, is his girlfriend in custody as well, and could she face charges? She was a person of interest. She's a person of interest in our investigation, and the investigation is ongoing. But as of right now, she's not being charged. And could you go into more details about this turf war that was going on between him and his brother? The the motive for this, and I can explain it this way: there's no motive for shooting, pulling out a gun, and shooting anywhere in New York City. But we believe. Our, our perp and our victim are CD vendor sellers in the area, but that does not excuse anything. With the investigation into the motive is still going, it's an ongoing investigation. Jen? Can you talk a little bit more? I know you said uh, you figured out that he was going down south, but what that timeline meant like, you know, tracking him in Fayetteville and, and eventually getting to Florida. Mike? Yeah, so we were just. You know, Mike. Yeah, so using our investigative techniques and working with the uh, Carolina Coastal Task Force, we were able to uh, get information and develop it that he was down in Fayetteville. And from there, using uh, computer checks and other things, we, we uh, assumed he was going to be traveling further south. And we reached out to the, uh, the Florida Caribbean Task Force, and they helped us out uh, with uh, tracking him and make, ultimately making the apprehension. They did a great job. Yeah, the address is 500 West 42nd Street. Andrew? No, and just, can you talk more about his brother? Has his brother been cooperating in this investigation and was he able to give you any information that helps with arrest? What I could say is his brother confirmed that he was the intended target in this and the investigation is, is ongoing. Tony? Uh, Chief, uh, the, what's the significance of that 802 Walnut Street address? I take it that's in the, what, Stark or? Uh, it, yeah, it's on McDonald's, McDonald's uh, in parking lot. That's where he was apprehended. Mark? Yeah. Um, did they say why he was shooting at his brother? N no. Uh, w the investigation into that is ongoing. Uh, and, and how did the brother know that he was being shot at by his brother? He just confirmed to us that he was the intended target. Tina? Did they stop to buy dog food in North Carolina? Is that where you actually found them? And what kind of dogs do you <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Steven? Uh, can we go into a little more detail about the apprehension itself? If he said anything as he was being taken into custody, and we also heard reports about his car's fuel level, if you could go into some detail about that. Yeah, uh, he, was <laughs> he was apprehended without an incident. A very professional job by the task force down in Florida. There was no incidents. Uh, he was eating at McDonald's. And, and it went, went very professionally, very smoothly. Did his car have fuel in it? 
that I can't tell you. But I know it was uh, when when uh, by the book. It was good. John Doyle. So you've been kind of history about problems with CD hustles in the past um, in the Times Square area. Um, we understand this might have been a turf battle between these brothers over prop over sidewalk space to hustle CDs and that. Is there any indication that this was involved in a turf battle? And uh, is the PD doing anything about CD hustles and other vendors in the Times Square area? Again, as to the motive in this, it'll be uh, it's under investigation. Once once it's complete, we'll know. Uh, as far as the vendors. So first, before I respond, I, I really have to make sure we commend uh, Police Officer Alyssa Vogel for her remarkable um, rescue of getting that young lady to an ambulance and getting her to the hospital. I thought that was phenomenal. Uh, and yeah, you know, uh, we kind of got out of the business of dealing with uh, CDs, and and that's pretty much Consumer Affairs' job now. But we're also going to take a look at you know um, aggressive soliciting, and making sure that they happen to stay in a certain zone by Times Square before they sell their CDs, be it using their First Amendment rights or some other way of uh, selling these items to tourists or any other New Yorker. No, absolutely not. This is something that we already took a look at, and uh, we're working with City Hall to see if there's something that needs to be addressed. Oh, Rocco. The Chief of the Government Covenant, and what was their game plan down in Florida? Any sense of scoop where they head down there? Uh, the gun has not been recovered yet. We're still, anybody has information on that, we, we hope, hope the public will reach out and help us again, but uh, it's an ongoing investigation into that. Uh, as far as where they were headed, we had some addresses down there that we knew he, they might have been heading to. Uh, that's what led us to Florida. Um, but uh, any, any information is leaving the country. No, we don't have that now. He, he altered his appearance. Uh, if you see, he's, he's, he's got a different haircut right now. He did alter his appearance. How so? Shaved, shaved, shaved his parts of his head and some of his dreadlocks off. Some of his, his locks. Linda Smith? I just need a clarification because I can barely hear you. Are you saying that he changed the color of his hair? He changed, he altered his appearance. He, he, he shaved down his head on the side. Okay, in addition to, okay. And then Florida, was, were they in Florida because family are there or friends are there? We, we knew he had some addresses that, that they might go to. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what led us to Florida once he started going through North Carolina. Uh, and we knew he was heading south. Okay, but you can't say if it was family or friends? No, not at this point. Okay, and then I also need a clarification, too, about the McDonald's thing. He was in the parking lot of McDonald's? Was he, he in the car? He, he was in the car in the parking lot. Okay, so the stories that we've heard then about them running out of gas because of long fuel lines and he couldn't get gas, that's all bogus? <laughs> <laughs> They were having lunch at McDonald's in the car in Florida. So we didn't check the fuel, the fuel level of the vehicle, but he was definitely having lunch in the vehicle. Okay. So, sorry for the nuance, but he was eating in the car, not inside, right? He was in the vehicle having lunch, yes. One could ask what he was eating. French fries were lying on the floor after the apprehension. French fries. <laughs> They stopped at a local Walmart down in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They got some supplies. Some of the supplies were dog food. There was two dogs with them when they were apprehended. Okay. And then what's the timeline now for extradition? And the well, they do due process down in Florida and then uh, have the opportunity to waive extradition and come up to New York. Or if he wants to fight extradition, then we go to court and bring him up to court uh, through the warrant also. Well, it's the charges the DA is going to file against him. Well, once he's in custody, in our custody, uh, we'll work with the Manhattan DA's office for the charges. All right, got time for one or two more, Tony? Uh, Chief, uh, off the, uh, were any shell cases recovered from the actual shooting? Did they provide any DNA type evidence? That, that's uh, pending, but we did recover three shell casings. All right, last one, Rocco.
That's part of the ongoing investigations. Originally, she, she's a person of interest in this investigation and uh, will determine as the investigation goes along. She's not in custody. Well, she's down in Florida, but she's not in police custody. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.